guys welcome back to the icm admiral cabriolet build in support of the ukrainian people i posted pictures of the uh, interior work that i did to this car and i've gotten so many questions on how i did it that uh, i decided to make this episode all about the interior and the seats and how i painted them to get the leather look unfortunately while i was painting i was having so much fun with creating this uh leather look that I didn't record everything, but I did take a few pictures of the process, so I'm going to be explaining it all as we go through, and uh, hopefully you'll get an idea of how I did this, and uh, you can give it a shot trying it on your own, and hopefully get similar results. Honestly, I was just kind of winging it and making it up as I went along, as I knew what I wanted, I could see it in my head, and I just had to transfer it onto the plastic. So I'm just kind of making this up as I go along, and uh, I'll just explain to you what I did. Hopefully it'll all make sense. As we start, I've already primed all the parts with Tamiya Red Oxide Primer. I use that because it gives a nice red tint to the plastic uh, and it shows through when I paint the base color which is Model Masters Leather. If you can still find this paint, I recommend you pick it up. It's a really great leather look color. And I use it whenever I want a reddish brown leather interior in one of my models. So here I am. I'm just airbrushing all of the interior parts after priming them with the red oxide primer in the Model Masters leather. I have the Model Masters leather thinned about 50-50 with Tamiya X20A acrylic thinner and sprayed it about 15 to 20 PSI. Now that I have the base color applied to the seats, I'm gonna start with the door panels. Again, primed in Tamiya Red Oxide Primer, and covered with a base color of Model Masters leather. This is the last part to get our base color over the red oxide primer before we start on the second step of this procedure. After applying the base color, I then prepare to apply the semi-gloss clear to give it the leather-like sheen as I don't like a high gloss on the leather when I'm trying to portray uh, automotive leather. As it's not your grandmother's couch covered in clear vinyl. It's a leather seat in a car. And when was the last time you saw a leather seat that was so shiny you could see your face in it? This to me is a much more realistic leather-like sheen than a gloss clear can provide. I then proceed to apply to me a panel line paint to bring out some of the details in the seats and that also helps to add shadows to some of the ridges in some of the panel work in the seat this then leads us to step three which is to apply some of the shading okay now we have our base color fully completed and now we're going to be adding our shading we used all clad burnt iron as the color of choice for applying our shadows and our dark shading in the recesses of the seat. This layer of color sprayed lightly over the brown leather. You don't want it to come out too heavy because you don't want it to be totally dark. You want to still see the brown coming through it, but you want it to be dark enough to show the different tones in the areas where you're simulating the light hitting the material. What I like to do is I take the airbrush and I hold it far away from the part 
and then I'll just start to lightly spray onto the part, allowing it to darken slowly. And I'll just go over it in all the recesses until I get the desired depth of the shadow that I want. Once I get the shadows right where I want them, then I'm going to lay another layer of the Model Masters leather color over the shaded areas and over the entire seat. That's going to serve to lighten up all of the overspray that darkens the color of the entire seat and just leave the recessed areas where the shadows would normally fall. Now, once I have the shadows exactly where I want them, then what I'm going to do is I am going to take Model Masters leather and I will thin it even more than a 50%. And that's going to lighten the color up. And then I'm going to spray that over the last layer of color that I just laid. Now that's going to be done in a pattern that will simulate the actual wear on the seat, similar to where on a real seat, the color would lighten up from use. And as you can see that on the seat cushion, the center of the seat cushion is a little bit lighter than the edges. And that is where we're simulating our wear patterns. This also serves to give you variations in color tones of the leather, the way real leather would be, as it's not all just one even color. As you can see in the photos, the edges and the vertical areas of the seat are a slightly darker shade than the horizontal surfaces where someone would be sitting and wearing away faster the color on the leather. These variations are what give it a very realistic tone. This is all applied by airbrushing the Model Masters leather on top of the previous color, which has already been darkened by the all clad burnt iron. And this is gonna this is where all your variations come from. It's at this point where you get to play with it until you get your desired color. Everybody's is gonna be a little bit different, just like a real seat as it wears. They're all gonna wear differently. This is the point where the areas you apply the paint are a little more important than the actual color output. This is the part where the actual area you apply the color is a little more important than the color itself to simulate a realistic wear pattern. And then you can just play with it and find a color that makes you happy. Kind of like what I just did. Just playing along. Here we're going to use the exact same technique using the same colors on the door panels. We're going to highlight the edges of the door panels as this is the darker areas where the recesses of the car's interior won't allow as much light in. And through the center post between the doors, just getting some shadows in there. Once the seats are in there, then that's all we're going to need. Now in our final step, we're going to apply a sealer coat of the Tamiya Semi-Gloss Clear to seal everything we've done in together and to give it all an even sheen so that it doesn't appear as if all of the shadows and, everything and all of the detailing that's been put in has been painted on. It now all appears to be an evenly worn seat with the variations in color which are natural for leather as it wears and looks a bit more realistic now as the all clad burnt iron is a flat color and it didn't really look right to have the semi-gloss seat with the flat shadows on it so the applying the semi-gloss to even out all of the colors really does just complete the entire package and give you an entire wholly complete seat is the best way that I can put it. It just looks like it's evenly worn and all made from similar hides of leather. You can see, if you look here, you can see the slight discoloration on the seating surfaces and wear that would appear from natural leather. You can see that the extra color added on top to simulate that wear is a slightly different tint than the color that came before. And that is what gives you a very realistic appearance for the seats. 
So I hope this little look into how I did this helps as I've gotten a lot of requests for people asking exactly how it was that I pulled this off. And I'm 100% not even really sure. I was just playing with my paints. And like I said, I was just making it up as I went along. So I figured I'd bring you guys along on this trip and you can see what I did. Hopefully it'll uh, make sense to you guys. And hopefully you can duplicate it on your own. This is something that's just more of a play with it until you like it kind of thing. No real, you know, button down technique here. It's just fun. I encourage you guys to try it as you get results that you really like. And it's fun. I mean, that's all I can say. It's like Lucas, he says, you do it because it's fun. I enjoyed this and I will definitely be using this technique again. And there's one other part on this build where I may be using it again. So I may be able to record it all if I don't forget to hit the button. See you on the next one.